Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be continuing on with our little series of watching the little MonsterVerse Monarch Universe movies that we're watching. So, that being said, welcome back to Watch This Wednesday. What, 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 what? Oh, it's Watch This Wednesday. I'll add it to the list. Alrighty, so today, as the day that I am posting this, is in fact a Sunday and not a Wednesday. But that being said, we are going to be watching Godzilla vs. Kong. Um, I'm incredibly excited to be watching this. Um, I think that I have seen this movie before, but I do believe that the first time I watched it, one, I wasn't giving it my full attention because it was just a movie to throw on. And for two, um, I hadn't seen Kong Skull Island or Godzilla King of Monsters yet. So I'm incredibly excited to watch this movie. I don't know a whole lot about what's going to be happening in it. But that being said, we're going to go watch it. It's on HBO Max for any of you guys who haven't seen it either. Um, but that being said, I'm going to go watch it and I will be back with my immediate review. Okay, so that one was pretty good. I remembered a lot of bits and pieces of it. It was starting to kind of come back to me as certain sequences were going on. I'm going to be totally honest. It was really weird. Um, every single time sequences were going on with Millie Bobby Brown, Brian Tyree Henry, and those characters, um, I was not remembering anything. But the majority of the stuff with, um, got, not Godzilla, the Kong parts with the, uh, lady at the beginning of the movie where they're, like, starting to speak with him in sign language and he's throwing spears at the dome that he's trapped in and stuff like that. That stuff all felt very familiar to me, so I definitely do feel like I have seen this movie at least once before, and um, I really enjoyed it. I think that is a whole lot of fun. Um, I think that some of the like alpha territorial type problems that these creatures are having is really interesting, and the way that they dive into them is cool. But that being said, I'm going to give this movie a full-on review. So if you haven't seen it yet, I'm going to obviously issue a spoiler warning. This movie has been out for about two or three years, so if you haven't seen it, like I said, it's on HBO Max. You can potentially go watch it now if you have HBO Max. If not, you'll probably rent it off of YouTube or some other website. That being said, um, we're going to give a full-on review for this. So um, right off the bat, I want to say I really enjoy that this movie kind of feels like the first one of these movies that fully decides hey, we're going to let the monster be the main character here. And I really like the fact that it opens up with a fun little montage of Kong basically getting ready. It was kind of like one of those like nine to five moments that they have in some old movies where the person wakes up, they're walking around their apartment in their pajamas, they're dancing to fun little music, making themselves breakfast, taking a shower and stuff like that. And they did a little montage like that with Kong, which I thought was very interesting. And the way that they're kind of like slowly building up to him, like, kind of just walking around Skull Island. He seems like very um, at peace. There doesn't appear to be any other monsters kind of like messing around with him on the island or giving him a hard time. And then uh, he grabs a tree, kind of like takes it off. And at first when I saw that, I was like, oh, cool. He's going to be making the axe from the trailers. Um, no, that was a spear. And he threw it into the dome that he's in. And it felt very reminiscent of my favorite Hunger Games movie, Hunger Games. Uh... Oh, crap. I'm blocking on it. I'm blanking on the name right now. Hunger Games, Catching Fire, there we go, the one where she shoots the dome, very, very iconic sequence, I really like the kind of parallels there, um, and I really like the fact that they're kind of going through this conflict of, we've been trapping these monsters for a really long time, a lot of them are growing, and a lot of them are getting stronger, we can't hold them forever, and they're kind of trying to figure out different ways that they could take care of these monsters, kind of put them to a different spot, and, um, the Hollow Earth thing is finally coming into fruition in this universe they've been teasing it a lot in some of the other movies and um we finally get introduced to an author who knows how to get there and he basically says you know all we need to do to get there is follow a titan down there so they set up this plot of trying to trick kong into going down into this little wormhole for them so that they can follow him down there and um i like that plot i think that it works really well i feel like it's a pretty straightforward movie which for these they 100 percent should be i feel like these movies always kind of miss the mark when they're like making these really complicated stories with the people and they're trying to change a whole lot of different interesting things to make it more than just hey here this here's this giant creature fighting this giant creature um this movie they seem to know a lot more that hey the audiences just want to see these things fight let's just make them fight so the plot was literally get kong from point a to point b and then Godzilla's gonna kind of fuck shit up in the middle. And I really liked that. Um, I liked how straightforward it was. I liked a lot of the action sequences. Their first time meeting in the middle of the ocean was a very interesting fight. And I liked that they were able to show Kong kind of having um, a disadvantage because he's in the middle of the ocean and Godzilla lives in the ocean, basically, and he can breathe water and all this stuff. So um, I really liked that first initial fight sequences. It was really good. I like the fact that they show Kong really fighting a lot for humanity to protect them. Because as I said with my uh, Kong 
review that I did a little bit ago, um, they make him a very compassionate character. And you can tell that he really cares for the people who are kind of looking after him and trying to transport him. Even though he's mad that he's in chains, he understands what they're doing and he understands the importance of what they're doing, which I really admire. Um, and like I said, that first fight, fight sequence is incredible, right? We get a lot of really cool battles between obviously the kaiju monsters but there's also a lot of really interesting sequences with the people who are trying to take off in jets and stuff on their little uh what are they called like helicarriers that's not it i'm thinking of marvel the little flat things in the ocean i don't know they're trying to take off in a in a jet and stuff like that and they're not being able to they keep exploding immediately they keep kind of like violently dying here and it's it's entertaining to watch as bad as that sounds because i realized i was just like hey these people are dying. That's fun. My bad. That's what we come to see these movies for, though. It's great. Um, but yeah, while all this stuff is going on with Kong, like I said, basically being the main character of this movie, which I love. I glad I'm glad that they did that. We get a fun little subplot of Godzilla just randomly attacked the city. He's never really attacked for no reason before. So they're diving into this, and I love the fact that Brian Tyree Henry's character is somebody who kind of sounds like he's batshit crazy. He seems like the kind of person who people will very quickly brush off and be like, okay, this guy just is off his rocker. He needs to take his meds or whatever. Um, and the fact that they have this fun little plot with Millie Bobby Brown's character who cares a lot about Godzilla because he saved her life. Um, and then going and investigating what's going on with the, what is it called? Atex? Apex? I think it's Apex. Um, that little tech company and be realizing, you know, these guys are doing something a little sketchy here. And um, I really like the way that that entire subplot is played out. It doesn't necessarily feel like it's taking away anything from the characters. And I like the way that they're slowly building the intrigue of what is this sketchy tech company doing? And I like the fact that the sketchy tech company ends up being the bad guys because I think that one thing that is huge here, if you're going to continue making movies about Godzilla specifically, and you're making him kind of a hero here and you're making him a good guy, is you need to realize Godzilla was originally a metaphor for some of the atomic bombs and stuff like that. And it was a metaphor for war. And a lot of the stuff with Godzilla was like the destruction that's caused when people get into fights with each other. And it was kind of like man-made destruction visualized via a giant lizard destroying the city. And um, I like that they're able to once again shine a light on the fact that sometimes the real villains are the people who think that they're making a difference and they think that they're helping the world out in a better way. Because like I said earlier, Godzilla kind of being a metaphor for war makes it where like the the bombing of Hiroshima, the bombing of Nagasaki, really terrible things, they're man-made decisions. And things were pretty bad, obviously, that led to that. But it was, in the end of the day, it was the men kind of destroying things. And I think that they do a really good job of kind of bringing it back to that. The people being the villains and the other people just trying to set nature back on the right course. It's fun. I like that Godzilla and Kong are both pretty much good guys in these movies and uh it's great i really like that and then um on top of that the fact that they set up mecha godzilla in this pretty cool he looked pretty cool as much as i hate to admit it that was a pretty cool villain that was a pretty cool fight sequence to see i really loved watching kong and godzilla fight together to take down the mecha godzilla do i hate that that happened and that it's warner brothers technically doing the exact same thing that they just did a couple years ago with uh, Superman versus Batman, kind of. But that being said, also, yeah, I said them backwards. I said it, Superman versus Batman, and I immediately was like, that's wrong. I hate that. It's Batman versus Superman. But um, just kind of that trope of, okay, we need the heroes to fight, but we want them to end on good terms, so we're going to have them actually team up to fight somebody else who's even worse. Um, and uh, the fact that, that someone worse was people, once again, thought that was great. And um. Yeah, that final flight sequence was fantastic. Obviously, they destroyed the majority of that city. I want to say it was Tokyo, but honestly, it could be any Asian city, so I'm not going to specifically say any one of them. But um, watching that city just get like destroyed while these people were fighting, pretty cool, pretty satisfying. I love kaiju fights, and I understand that a lot of people kind of want to get back to some of the Godzilla movies where like he's destroying cities and we get to see things from the people's point of view. But that being said, sometimes being able to just shut your brain off and watch these giant creatures fight is so refreshing and so fun. So yeah, overall, I had a really good time with this movie. I feel like this A plot, the B plot, the C plot, whatever, everything kind of tied in really nicely. And um, I think that we had a whole lot of fun action sequences here. I feel like Kong was great whenever we first get to see him join Hollow Earth and all that stuff. And it's a whole lot of fun. Um, Godzilla, for the most part, kind of discovering, okay, humans are kind of up to something shady and trying to shut it down. 
really interesting and the introduction of Mechagodzilla was really really cool so overall I had a great time with this movie I think that the, they have slowly been kind of getting better a little bit here and uh this one was very refreshing how good it was um, I like this movie. I'm going to give it a solid 84 out of 100. Definitely not the best movie ever. Definitely not one that I think is going to be like critically acclaimed or anything like that. But I loved it. I had a great time with it. If you want to just see giant creatures fighting giant creatures, this is perfect for you. But yeah, that being said, that was it for this video, guys. Um, I am finally going to get around to watching Godzilla X-Kong, the new Empire soon. Going to go to a theater to check it out. Might go try to see if I can find it on IMAX. And then I'm going to be making a movie review for that one probably this upcoming Wednesday. And whenever I do that, I'm also going to go ahead and make a movie, I mean a video, ranking all of the movies of this little monster verse as well. So stay tuned for that. But that being said, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, feel free to like and subscribe. And I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Bow. Bow, 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 bow. Uh, back at it again, but that's irrelevant Flow so smooth, they calling me Mr. Elegant Like an elephant, I got a long nose Like a president, I've got a few hoes Swift with a stutter, I'm smooth like butter Don't see it coming when I slip undercover Like a big dog, but I don't bite I'm still a big broad, I'd win that fight Come match you and I knock out your l l lights